Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and today we're going to dive into the question, a 20 amp circuit breaker, when will it trip? Now, today I'm just going to be planting a seed. This is a very complex subject with lots of different layers to it, but I really want to plant a seed and I want to get you thinking today. Before we jump into today's video, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor. It's Marcate. Marcate is the only customer relationship management tool that we recommend. We're going to learn a little bit more about them later in the video. Now let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so most of us have heard about products being listed. And there are companies like UL, ETL, UL being probably the most famous, and we're going to learn why here in just a few moments. But we've all seen a sticker like this, and most products are required to be listed. UL's tested it, make sure that it worked inside of these parameters. But where do these parameters come from? And a lot of us don't know about product standards. I didn't know about them until a few, you know, several years ago. Product standards are the parameters by which these manufacturers manufacture these products, and those are written by UL. So how it works is, is UL will take something like a molded case circuit breaker, or if a new technology comes out, and they will physically write the parameters by which these products are to be manufactured. And it's not just that they're trying to control the market. It has nothing to do with that. It's that if we don't have a standard for these products to be made by, then it's just going to be the Wild West. And who knows if your circuit breaker is going to trip. So UL takes and writes the standard. They come up with things like trip thresholds, interrupting ratings, size and spacing, and then they set all the rules around those. This lesson here is just to plant the seed. And if there are any of the what I call wigs watching this one, please comment down in the comments below anywhere where I could have added value to this video. And I, as I learn more about this subject and this topic, I will continue to make videos. And if you look down in the pinned comments, if I felt it was necessary to make a correction, you can check down there. So what will happen after UL sets these standards is a company like one of my favorite brands, Siemens, will purchase these standards from UL. They physically buy the standard and that's the standard by which they manufacture their products. So you, uh, Siemens goes to UL and says, hey, we're making molded case circuit breakers. We want to purchase this standard, these rules that we're going to you know, build this product by, the minimum thresholds. Now, they could probably go above and beyond that as far as safety goes, but there are some minimums, and like with tripping thresholds, like we're getting ready to scratch the surface on, there are going to be things that you know Siemens has to meet. And then once they manufacture, Manufacture this product, they physically send it back to somebody like UL or ETL, and then ETL or UL judge them based off of the UL standard. They pull the standard out, they have the product in their hand, and they make sure that it meets all these parameters. So let's go ahead and learn when will this circuit breaker trip. All right, y'all, I want to take a minute and give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. It's Mark 8. Mark 8 is the only customer relationship management tool that we recommend. You can run your entire company directly from your phone or from your desktop computer. Estimates, invoices, scheduling, work orders, everything. But today I want to show you the number one feature that means the most to me, and that is the virtual estimator. Now you guys know at my company, I'm the chief estimator. And one of my favorite things to do is to go out with the customer and dream with them, right? They're going to hire whoever can deliver the dream on the highest level. And that's what I love to be there for. We're talking about the ins, the outs, all the good things. But one thing I don't really like doing when I'm on site is taking measurements. And that's one of the greatest problems that Marquette solves for me. One thing you can do is just come back to the office and click. Let's say you knew the panel was on this side of the house and the customer wanted the panel there on this side of the garage. All you do is have to set your two points and bam, I know it's exactly 28.63 feet from that point to that point. Or sometimes you get back to the office after taking the measurements and the customer decides to put the panel in the back of the garage. All I have to do is come, change my points, and that lets me know the difference in conduit and in wire that I have to get. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I would never recommend anything to you guys that I didn't think would add value to you. So I highly recommend that you check out the Marcate app. You can check it out in the link in the description below in this video. And if you do sign up through that link, you can get two weeks for free and try out Marcate for yourself. I would love to hear some feedback and let me know if you love it just as much as I do. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's get to it. Let's start at the baseline. This breaker is designed to hold 20 amps indefinitely. Now, 
right here we're talking about smaller breakers, 60, 50 amps or less. These standards are very complicated to go read for just a regular person like me. These manufacturers like Siemens have people who can thoroughly understand all the science behind all these rules. So today I'm really just kind of scratching the surface. I want to kind of plant a seed. And this is not, you know, don't go start manufacturing breakers based off this video, right? But this, these breakers are designed to run indefinitely at their current rating, at 20 amps. So with that being said, if you've done your math correctly and you've done 125% of your continuous loads and 100% of your non-continuous loads, you can load this breaker right up to 20 amps and it's designed to run indefinitely. And the biggest takeaway I want us to have today is that if ETL gets this breaker from Siemens and it trips at 20 amps and it's rated for 20 amps, they're not going to put their stamp on it, their stamp of approval. It's not going to be a listed product because they didn't meet the standard. Now, we know Siemens is going to hit the standard every time because they just are good like that. And I love other brands too, don't get me wrong. And this is not a paid promotion by Siemens by any means. But with that being said, if they were to send that breaker over to ETL and it tripped at 20 amps, they're not going to approve it. So the next standard that they have is it will trip within one hour at 135% of its rating. So within an hour, it has to be confirmed trip at 135% of its rating. So if we are a 20 amp breaker, you would multiply that by 1.35 and it's allowed to run up to an hour or just under an hour at 25 amps. And that's why we protect our wires in the way that we do. We can't have things tripping as soon as it hits 21 or 22 amps. That would just be a nuisance all the time. So it's designed to run a certain amount of time to give us that leeway to back back down. And things like 310.15B16 and all the other rules for ampacity are protecting our conductors. Let's not lose sight of what we're actually doing here. Everything that we do in the electrical industry is to protect humans and the equipment whether it's the copper itself of the wire, the insulation, the circuit breaker, the panel, the buses, all these rules are supposed to work in you know perfect unison in a perfect world to protect all of that. So the next standard is that it must trip within two minutes at 200% of its rating. So if it's tripping within two minutes, it's doing its job, somebody like ETL is going to put their sticker on it saying that it's you know performing the way that it's supposed to perform so if we were to take that 20 amps and multiply it by 2.0 we're going to end up with 40 amps and it's required to trip within two minutes which makes sense right if we've got this very large current we want you know hey if it's just going to be for just a moment maybe the startup of a motor we're not going to go into motor overloads or anything like that today we don't want it to trip right away what if your microwave fluxes up for just a minute then it comes back down we want to be able to use our products without it being a nuisance all the time because what happens is if a product was a nuisance a customer will just put a larger fuse or a larger breaker in there, and then we have a hazard. So I hope this video added a little bit of value to you. These standards, you can, you can check them out. You can actually look at them online. I, you know, if you're welcome to go study them a little bit further in depth, as I learn more, I may come back and make more complex videos kind of really explaining it. This is really outside of my world. I don't manufacture products. I do not... Uh, set the standards. I do not have to follow these standards. This is not really my world, but I thought that this was very interesting and I thought that it would help you, you know, not only understanding kind of how circuit breakers work, but maybe in troubleshooting. If I've got a breaker like a microwave and it's tripping within two minutes, I know that current is at least 200%. Well, if I did a quick Ohm's law or I looked on the nameplate of that piece of equipment and it's supposed to run at 12 amps and I'm tripping within two minutes, there's a chance that there's something wrong there. So you can use all of these things that you learn to help you troubleshoot, to help you be able to solve problems, to be able to you know, look cool out on the job when you're talking about circuit breakers, all of these things. And as we all learn and grow together, the biggest thing that I love about this industry is that no one knows it all. You could take the smallest subset of this industry, just conductors, and spend the rest of your life studying it and never learn it all. So I never claim to know it all, and the mark of a really good electrician to me is when they know what they do know, and they know what they don't know, and they know how to stop and go ask. Every time I interview someone, it's always... We prefer that you call. I need. I don't care what you do know. I care what you don't know. Because what you don't know can get someone killed. What you do know is what we're paying you for. And you knowing the difference is the difference of whether or not I hire you. I need you to know clearly what you do know and what you don't know. And the difference between the two 
and that you'll have the integrity to call when you don't understand. So I never claim to know everything about a topic. I learn stuff from the code coachers, and hopefully the code coachers learn stuff from me. I want to encourage you today. There's a lot of crazy things going on in this world, and I just want to encourage you that there is hope. Things are going to be okay, and you can work every single day on helping other people see that hope too. So today, I want you to be encouraged, and and hopefully you are by this channel, but I want you today to encourage somebody else, whether it's a a, a junior employee underneath you, just an equivalent colleague, maybe somebody up, just say, hey, Things are going to be cool. Let's keep grinding this out. We can do this together. You know, there's power in numbers, and I want you to know that not only can you be encouraged today, but you can actually go out and encourage somebody else. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add a little bit of value to you, and then you will in turn go out and add value to others. If there's anything that you need from me, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.